Okay, last last week we finished from from here. So we started the login feature. So and we did for giving a navigator the site. And I click and I enter email ad address, enter password, and also click on the signing button. So and we stopped there because we we did not do the assertion, so which is the then clause at the end. So today we start from the assertion, assertion, how to do assertion. So there are different ways that you can assert on in your code. So and to this evening we're going to cover two methods. So first one using the end unit and also or uh, and also using uh, flint assertion, yeah, using flint assertion and also maybe a unit. Also, you can also use MS MS test also, also for assertion. There's assertion that comes with MS test also, so which is so similar with a unit. So, so let's go through that. So maybe we start with the standard. MS test assertion, then we move to a unit, then we do the flint one. So like I was saying ab about the minor testing steps that you carry on. So when you want to test the login, you navigate to the site, you click on the login page, and then also you confirm, you enter your email address, and then enter your password, then you sign in, and after you sign in, you want to be sure that, okay, you sign in or there's no error message. So um, that's what we want to confirm now, that I've been able to sign in. I didn't get any error, error message. So that's what so we want to assert right now. So, so if I go to the step definition for that, it said it's not bound which I think is not right. Yeah, it should be bound. Okay, so that is the step definition for when you that you want to confirm that you sign in. So uh, at this point, you click on the sign in, so automatically you should be signing. So, but right now you want to confirm or verify that you've signed in. So now, also, last week we put our page object for login page in there. So, which lists everything that we have on the login page, as in the object on the login page. And also, there is also a met um, different methods that does um, that do different things. So, now, I will quickly open the web. So now on, on this page, you click on the login screen. You click on the login screen. After you click on the login screen, you enter your email address. You enter your password and you click on sign in. So when you do that, if you are not successfully signing, you will see this error message. So, and you want to confirm. One way of confirming that you are signing is to confirm that you didn't see any error message here or this particular um, element is not displayed. That is first step. Another step is to check because when you sign in, there will not be any login page, login again, that should change to the name of that particular user that signed in. So you can also do that, confirm that this login is not displayed 
and also you can confirm that that particular user is displayed there. So there are different ways to confirm that you're logged in. So for today, we're going to confirm that this text is not is not displayed. So another one also, I think you could do this. So that only display that particular text. So so let's go back again. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is another uh, text that you could confirm because that also is just saying that that email address is not valid. So that's another you know, text. So, but however, you can actually confirm that. Yeah. Mm, a, a text is there. It doesn't matter what the text is, but actually it contains something. So now let's go to our test case. So the first thing you want to get, let's you want to inspect that element, and that element is the. So the first thing maybe we should get this particular element out and see is a lot danger. So and uh, let's get let's use CSS selector. So now as I said last week we're using the page object module. So using that I can create my page object. Find bar. Oh. Does this selector? So now we go our web elements here. We got our web element here. So the next one you could do is to get your method to return what that element contains. So um one minute or if that element exists. Let's go. I think if you try to get that one, I think that might be better than what the one that we got. Copy selector. 
So I prefer to get that particular text so that we can confirm that text instead of getting the div. So initially we got this div, we can get this text. So I can do both of them anyway, just to see what we can. So that's maybe let me do the second one just for exercise. So we can just differentiate those one. That is only for the block, and that is the is the message. So now the next one I want to do is that I want to get the text for this particular method uh, for this particular element. So I can write public. Uh, so I want to return a string. So I say get invalid login error message. So then what am I returning? I'm returning return return this one dot text. So I think I mentioned this last week that uh you can use text to get that particular text that has been displayed in that particular element. So I think we've gone through all these methods here, what they can do for you. So today we're going to use the text to get that particular text out. So this method, when you call this method, it's going to get the text for that particular um, web element. So that is that. Then let's do another one to confirm if this block exists. You can do both. You can do as either one rather, just to confirm that, okay, you've logged in or you did not see that error message. So one, I've confirmed, I want to confirm that error message is not displayed. Also, I can also confirm that this particular block is also not displayed. So once I can say blob
So I would need to return a boolean because I'm returning, oh, sorry, public boolean. So because I'm returning a true or false, so I'm trying to confirm if that particular element is display, displayed or not. So, so now return return this particular element. So displayed. So this is going to re return a true or false for me to to be sure if that element is is available. If the element is available, it's going to return true. If it's not available, it's going to return false. So now, these are the two methods that we've written. So this one gets the text, and this one gets established if that particular block is there or not. So the next one that you want to do is to go to your step definition, and you now write your assertion. So you can say assert. Uh, so dot. So what do you want to assert? So now using you can see this is using uh, test to Microsoft and um, unit testing. So which is MS test. So you can use that. I haven't installed any uh, Nugget package at all, so this comes with Microsoft actually. So you can you can use that. So if you now go to the assert, so there are a lot of things that you can assert here. You can compare two strings together if one is equal and if they are equal to each other, or if they are not equal, if they are the same or equals if the result is fail, if it returns a fail, or it's not conclusive, if it's not, if it's not not true, as in different things that you could do here. Yeah. And also there's also that you know, assert that that one should be true. So now in this particular case, we want to assert that that state one is true or is false. So one, you want to, because if that part, the first one, let's start with the block. If that block is displayed, then that message is, you want, you want if that block, this block, let's go back. Yeah, if this block is displayed, then you've not actually signed in. But what you want to confirm that you've signed in. So what you are going to assert here is like, this message should not be displayed. So that means it should be false. So for you to do that, you want to assert that that is false. Is dot is false. So it's false. So what is false? So what exactly is false is what is being returned in this particular block. So this, which we get from our login page. So if you go to the login step, so now I need to just say login page dot um, get error block is not displayed. So open and close bracket. So that is that. So because this is going to return a true or false situation for you. So if you return a true, so which is not what it should return, it should return a false for you. So then it's going to compare, is this one false? So, and if you sign it correctly, it should be false. Then your test is going to pass. So, but if you don't sign in properly, so, and you get an error message and the block is there, then it's going to be true. So once it's true, then this assert is going to fail because it's expecting this to be false. 
So that's what you do, how you do the assertion. So you could as well, if you don't want to use that, now let's do the second one, but we'll do the second one using n units. So we've not done n unit here, so I'm going to add n unit to my NuGet package. So you search for n unit. So add it to your project. Install. Okay. Now you need to be careful here because at this time also you will write assert so and dot okay but before i do that i let me remove the one for this one for the ms test one so if i say assert dot now go here so now you can see i've got two now initially i had only one i've got two using n unit using microsoft unit but based on my understanding you can only use one because that is they are the same word as such so you need to now decide which one to use initially we've used the uh, uh, ms test one so let's try to use the n unit one n unit dot so you can see it's basically the same thing there's not much difference but the only thing is like as you can see now you have more things that you can do you have more things that you can do uh, compared to the ms test one so you can see you got false instead of it's false we got different thing equals contains so uh let's try to use the contain so we now say okay uh, the first thing we do, let's use is no or is no no. So one is empty, is not empty. So it's no empty. So yeah. So let's go back to the test. So no one, when you sign in this, you want to confirm that this is empty. It's, there's nothing there actually so nothing is returned in this particular uh, cloud in this particular element for you so it doesn't return anything so if that is the case then that means you're signing correctly so if that so for you to do that you need to say assert dot is empty so is empty yeah so that should be empty. What should be empty? Our the error message that's on the login page dot what is that the so uh, yeah. so this and this should be one that I use but i will tell you something what i would favor is not this one but however is this particular one that's what I, I will look for is like just to be sure that that particular block is 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 there or is not there so but both both of this one also will do the same thing so yeah so that is that for n unit now let's try to now go to use fluent assertion so to assert that using fluent assertion let's go to our registration maybe we do that in the registration one then i am registered okay
Okay. So let's go to the registration page. So when you click on sign in, you want to confirm that you've registered. So click on that mm, apparently. Yeah. Nothing happens. So nothing happens if you got any error. So you could you could validate all these errors to be, to confirm that they are not displayed after you sign in. That is one. But or let's say I put a valid detail there. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me put first name and last name. So now for you to, if you click on sign, sign up, what do you have? So then you can confirm this particular box to say, oh, you're able to see that particular sign up that this particular user is sign up. So let's check that. So copy, let's use S path. So we can put a in the login page also, let's see. So this time around, I want to use SPAF. Oh, sorry. Think that. Okay. SPAF. Like I said last time, you need to be careful when you're using SPAS. So the I think that also puts some spaces in between my code, which I don't like. So I need to put escape. So yeah. Then Successful. 
registration message. So the next one, your method. So that should return a string because it's a string that you want to confirm. String get successful message. Open and close. Ah. Okay, so you want to return Text. So that should return the text of that particular element that we've identified there. So then if you go to our registration step now to use it, then I am registered. So you know our is from the login page. Dot. Get successful. So we know that we can do something just to be for other people that are kind of struggling with string. If you have a question, type your question in in the chat so I can answer them. So string. Let me call it message. So I just want to use a different approach. So now my string is what I returned from my get successful message. So that's going to be the text of that particular um, block here. So now, so what do I need to do? I need to confirm that that particular text does something. So it contains something. Or I can even I can even ascertain that it actually contains the right text and everything. So depending on what we want. But in this one, we want to assert here also. But how do you do that? We want to use, we've done the end unit one, we've done the MS test one. We want to try to use the flint assertion. So for you to use flint assertion, we need to, we need to, uh, add flint assertion to our NuGet package. Flint assertion. So that is the one that you want. Then install. So now we have Flint assertion. We want to assert the message contains something. So you could say message dot should. So if you do that, then you need to add your Flint assertions. So should do what? Should contain or should um, be null or you can say, okay, should not be empty. So 
you have shoe. So now, if you now compare your end unit MS test with uh, Flint assertion, you see you've got more than what they have. So you got that loss here. So now we have different options. We can say that particular message should not be empty, or so should not be null, or we could as well go for maybe this this one should not be null or empty. So that's our assertion. That is one. Or you could do the same. You could say. Or you could say message dot should sorry should then so you could now match. You say match, or you could say equal should. Contains or equals. So, depending on what you want to use, so that uh, let's say let's go for equals. So, what should it equal to that? Just, just copy everything. That's good. Okay. So, so that is one approach also. Or you could as well say message dot should dot B. So so you you can also be equal or oh, then you can as well put what you want to put in there so that's one. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do that anyway, so let's crop that. So, so dot. So you could use B. Uh, there are different ways you can do your assertion based on what you you have. Also, contain any, contain or end with or start with. So depending on what you want to to test, not B or B or something like that. So you got a lot of things that you can you can use. So for instance, start with. So. Yeah, so that is that with assertion, to be honest. So, and then let's try to run the script. One minute. So, which which assertion is the best? 
one question which assertion is the best one to use. I think if you ask different people, you have different answers, to be honest. So, so another question, can you use both of the assertions together? So, uh, more often, if you work in a team, there will be a strategic decision for you, for which one they are going to use. They may not use both of them together. The team has to decide which one to go. Do you use the end unit or do you use the flint assertion? So uh, the same way I ask people, why do they go with flint? Why do they go with end unit? So an end unit, I think end unit came before the flint one. But flint is easy. As you can see, it's kind of English-like. Message should not be empty. Message should equal message you start with. So with that, people will tend towards full length because as name impl implies, each length, it's easy to understand what you are trying to do in terms of the assertion that you are trying to assert. Do you use what is already being used in code? Yes, I would say. Yeah, so if you go and if you get a job today and you are using Flint, you may end up using Flint uh, unless you want to prove or you want to uh, tell them or convince them that to go the other way to a unit. But that's where you need to know both of them. If your team is using a unit, then you need to use a unit. If they're using MS test, you need to use MS test within, within your team. So, and if they're using Flint assertion, you need to use Flint assertion. And as you can see, both of them, are, all of them are kind of not difficult to use. So, and you just need to know how to use them. So, yeah, I think that answer the question. So, for the next two, um, let's say five minutes before we go on a break. So I would run the test. Don't do as I did, to be honest, I'll tell you, that's not a good approach. When you are writing the code, when you finish the first one, please run it because you cannot be 100% sure that it's working. So, for instance, I, I did the login one. I didn't run it, so that's not how to do that, to do it. So, make sure you run it So before you go into another test. I think, another question, which one do you think is the best to use? I think I've answered that question. So, uh, in terms of assertion, flint, or air units. So, for me, I will, if you want my opinion, I would say Flint is, is because it's um, easy to read and understand. So, but like I said, other people have got their opinion about which one is the best or which one is not. So, and if your team is using anyone, so you might end up using the same thing that they use. So, yeah. Hope I maybe can understand, mm, answer that question again. So, I'll go back to the login. So even before the login, let's let's try to use the registration, right? Registration so that when we register a new user, then we can log in with that particular user. So and let's see if that works. So the first thing is the registering new users. So let's see. Um, Okay, I think one line is missing. There's no email address here. Yeah. So we need to, and I enter email address. So, okay. All right, so because you've, we've entered, we've had um, that before, so that automatically linked. So let's try to run this one. So and see, run, okay, let me first build. 
just to be sure everything is fine. Okay. So when you build, you're looking for your results to be sure that well, it discovered five tests and everything runs successfully. No error messages at all. Okay, cool. So now I can run this. I see what that it does for us. That, that failed, so it's trying to repeat again to see if it can redo it again, so yeah. Okay, cool. I think the problem will be enter password and password. So let's see what we have in those two. Enter password. My secure password. Then what about confirm password because both of them have to be the same password. So yeah, that is wrong. That should be the same as the my secure password. So that should be the issue. But like I said last week or so, we could also put a breakpoint and see what the problem is. So then if you put a breakpoint where you just need to click on that. So, and I think I added this breakpoint last week. So you can remove any other breakpoint by going to be, if you go to debug, see delete or breakpoints or disable all breakpoints. So I can delete all the breakpoints I have before and everything is gone. So now I can create a fresh breakpoint. I want it to stop at these two places. So then I debug. Okay, so now you have that. So let's put that somewhere because we need to register log in with that user if it's successful. So so now you need to enter your password, enter password and confirm password. So that if you want to continue running your test, you can press on F10 or F11. F10 will step into that code, then F 
um, F11 rather will step into the code, then F10 will step over it. Step into we mean that you go into that particular code to see what is there. If I press F11, it's going to go resecute this particular line and go to the next one. But sorry, I missed them all. Uh, F F10 is going to execute this line and move to the next one. But F11 is going to go into the enter password. So let's go with F11. That goes into enter password. So then you can see what it does line by line. So the first thing, clear and enter password, my secure password. So that is entered. So then press F11 again. So, so now, so the next one is that. So it's going to go to confirm password and enter the user. So I think we talked about this last week. We have different approaches. So at this point, we use the page object module, but this one we use the conventional one where you just find element and also. So maybe if time permits us today, I will try to remove the hook and now we talk about a different approach to, to apply so that you don't have to say hook dot driver everywhere. So because we can as well just put your driver um, dot find element without having to put the hook everywhere like what oh, is where we are. So then let's continue running our test. So, so that is already done. Confirm password. So, so and I said last last week or so you can decide to be clicking the F11 or clicking here. So, but if you think, oh, I've passed that level, I can decide to continue. You can click on continue. That does minister for you until you have where you are breakpoint. If there's no more breakpoint, it finishes your test like that. So I think I'm also interested in going to what happens uh, then when I'm registered. So let's go through each of the steps. So that clicks on the sign in button, hopefully. So that's good. So you can see it was not able to click. It clicked on the sign in button, but the Google capture is there. So I don't think you, you'll be able to install on um, do anything on Google Capture. Let's try to look, see if you can. But, but yeah, to be honest, that's the point of having the Capture so that you don't, um, you don't use any automation scripts to, to go into that. But let's see if you can be able to break it. So, but this is not going to finish anyway, so it's going to fail. So now if you go return that, so yeah, could not find the element by text and everything. So, so then could not find that element. So, it could be. So unfortunately that he has to do it like three times, so.
Yeah, okay. So, okay, finally, it's on. So let's go back to the code one after the other, try to fix what the problem is. The first one is the capture, right? So let's see if we can code it, but I don't expect it to be coded because that's the point of capture so that you cannot do automation on it. So right click on the let's inspect the element. So that is that. Let's get the page object for that. So let's hold that. So now, just for the training sake, let's put the page object inside the login. So what normally you put is you create another um, page object for registration. So find find by. I think we copy the CSS selector, if I'm sure. Okay, uh, CSS selector. Okay. Five eight. Oh, okay, sorry. Thought something was weird there. Okay. So, so now, I think void, I just need to click on it. Void. So what am I clicking on? I'm clicking on that one. So which is our object. Dot click. So as you can see, the first one, I find my ele element. So just to understand the logic, find your element, put it in this order, depending on how you find it, that's fine. Then the next step, create a method. You can call it anytime you want, anything that you want. So as long as it makes sense and it's meaningful, then also what you want to do that, you want to click on that object. You just put that name of the object, the click. If you want to send into, if you want to type into that element, you just call the element dot yeah, um, send keys and you put what you want to send. So that is the, is the logic. That's why I, I've been trying. So it's not that difficult to be honest if you get the sequence. So the first thing, get your element using that finds by, then create a method to do to perform the action you want to do. So and then also then put your action inside. The one I did there was basically I want to get the string that or the text that's in that particular block. So, but because I'm getting something, I need to get a return clause. So this is action. This one is for the actions. But this one, I want to get something. So the way I'm going to call that particular uh, method will have to, I have to get something back. 
So in that regard, I need to put, I won't be able to use void. I need to put the type of the string or the type of the data type that I want to return. So I'm returning the string. So then that's where you now have a return keyword. So then what are you returning? You return text of this particular um, element which we've identified or declared at the top. So that's it. So let's go back to our recapture um, click. So I've done that. So now I go into my step definition to call this particular class, to spot this particular uh, method. So I go into my login, not registration, step definition. Before I do that, as, as you can see, there is no, um, yeah. After you click on password, after you confirm your password, there should be a step to click on on recapture and I click on recapture button. So then, like I said, generate that one. So you can generate that step and click on copy. So I want it to be in the registration step. So I can put it here. So now I can click on that recapture login dot start. Click on recapture. So that is that. So I can click on the recapture. Then let's try to run it. So another thing I saw why we are running the script was, this is kind of a bit advanced, but uh, I need to tell you, in, in, in here, then I am logged in, right? So now, because, okay. Because in some cases, Let's go to the okay. So, if this particular uh, element is not displayed, if it's not displayed, it's going to return an exception for you. It's going to return an exception for you. So, and if you return an exception, your test is going to fail automatically. So, for with that, you're not going to. Okay, I think. Hold on one minute. That's it. Question. Yeah. How would this work if after adding the click capture, you require us for? I sample select all boxes with cars or signpost in it. Okay. Yeah, that is a good question. That is a good question. <laughs> because it is it is meant to work that way because it is meant to stop you um, a robot <laughs> from using it. So I'm not expecting that to go through because yeah, after you click on yeah, that I am not a robot. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, in it's because I've signed it through this one, so it's it's not asking me. So I think for me, ask the question, which is a very valid question, because sometimes when you click in here, it's going to ask you to select uh, maybe roads or cars or something like that, but you don't know because it's automation. So that's where. Uh, you will not be able to continue. But in this case, I think it allows me because you already cached my system that I've been using this. But let's see if he's able to do that using the automation. But normally, it's meant to prevent automation yeah, because that's the point. So I think that's a valid question. So uh, in a normal scenario for automation environment, they would remove the capture 
so that you can continue your testing. They will remove this step, um, but they will put it in life environment, but in the um, testing environment, it might be removed so that it's not stopping your testing, basically. So I hope that answers uh, the question. Okay. So let's continue. So I was saying that in some cases, uh, okay, I, I, I forgot what I was saying now. Okay, let's continue. Let's run the script anyway. I'll do the debug again, just to be sure I can see what. So I think it's finished. So, uh, oh, okay. So, so click on F eleven. So I'll click on F ten now. Okay, so it said you could not find that element. <laughs> Let's see if that is true. That's what we're trying to establish. So I've copied that what we we put there. So it's trying to find find it. So that's not coming out. So let's see again if it's a different one. So it's able to find that one. So let's check what's the difference. So 
So I need to continue this one so and edit it. Okay, let's do the capture again. is a big one. Okay. Maybe not. So what's the difference? We capture dot anchor D dot recapture checkbox there's not much, there's no difference, isn't it? The same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, there seems to be a lot in there, so, um, so, well, okay. Let's try for the last time, to be honest, but normally you shouldn't have recaptured this, so I would exclude this, so, in, in your test, but let's carry on, I would say, on, on that. So, with exception of the recapture, which, to be honest, if it's normal button, that's what you do, and you just click it, and and you continue, and at the end you verify your text that it matches that. So, but one thing I want to say also, in some cases, this is going to throw an exception because if your text fails and it's going to be looking for this particular text and it's not there, so for you to have a consistent run, you might need to try cache it. So I will not discuss much on that, so uh, you need to try and touch. So oh, oh, okay. So 
you don't need to worry too much on this just to, because I just want to use that exercise for you. Sometimes you might need to try cache your elements because sometimes when that element is not there and it's looking for that element to click or to get a method or to get a text from it, then it throws an exception. It's okay for click, for instance, because if your if this recapture is not there, then it, and it couldn't click, click it, your test is going to fail. You, that's fine because it's okay because that test is not there. Um, that control is not there. Your test you fail because it's it's a valid um, um, failure. But in some cases, for instance, when you log in. And in the case of logging in, right, when you log in and that particular error message is not displayed, it's not supposed to try an exception. But because it's looking for that particular control or element to be there and it couldn't find it, it's going to try an exception. So your test is not going to continue. So even it's not going to return anything to you. And because it doesn't return anything to you, even in this particular case also, if the test is there, um, that particular text is not there, or that particular element is not there. It's not good. It's not going to return that string to you. It's going to make your test to fail completely. But which is still fine. But you don't you don't want that test to fail like that. You want it to return whether nothing or something. Then you can now validate your um, step definition. So, but. This is kind of another advanced one that you might need to do in future. So do contact me if you have any question with this particular one. So, so okay. So what I'm going to do is okay because of recapture, I think we cannot go on that. So I will swiftly move to the login page. So, but I can as well just comment that capture so this is another way to comment it uh, to comment your feature line so that if you don't want this test to run you just put the uh, ash sign and then that is already being commented that so when well, anytime you run it it's not going to run the line so let's go to the login and uh, let's try to run Okay, don't know why that failed. Let's check that. Okay, all right. Uh, login validates. Login finisher is invalid. Please try again. So, Okay, so I think this is fine because now your test fails at your assertion, right? So which is what you want. It goes into your assertion and it also confirms that that error is displayed. So instead of false, you get a true. So that message that is not should be is not supposed to be there. Let's flip, let's flip this one around, right? And do the invalid.
So in this situation now, we want to confirm that we are not signed in. So um, I'll use the same approach, but in this case right now, I would pull this here, but I'm expecting it to be false, right? So this is going to return false if it's that, so, so, but no, not really. I'm expecting it to, to return that particular test for me. So I'm not going to say it's false. So I'm going to say it's true. So I'm going to say it's true because if it's, it's true means that that particular block is not displayed. That particular block is not displayed. So that's what is going to happen. So if it's true, that means it's coming back with not displayed. So because if you come here and if you come into this point, so so for this one, that uh, block is going to be displayed. And if it displayed, that means I'm not logged in. So and if it displayed, uh, it's going to return true. So once it returns true, and then it is true here, so that means I'm okay with my test. So let's try to run that one with invalid one. So then, um, so I'm trying to okay. All right. So there's just some issues with the okay invalid because. I think in the time when I started this testing, I actually told you, if you don't know what you are doing, don't copy feature files. <laughs> because if you do that, so you might be looking at errors. You can see there are a lot of errors here. But now, it, one of the errors was because the login name and the log the scenarios, they've got the same name. So let me build it again. Same. Okay. So, and I can. Let's try to debug that. So now, so click on sign in button. So that's already been clicked and it's displayed this error message for us. So now it's going to assert if that error message is displayed. So it returns and So I think you return true. So yeah, so that means your invalid test actually passed, so which is fine. So once you log in with invalid password, as you've done, and then 
you put that there so it should be able to pass so I will run it again and see without debugging So yeah, that is that so is finished. So uh, I think that that's that on that test. So you can see we got a pass test and we got an also another failed test. That failed because you are not able to log in successfully. So because we are using the wrong password. So we show that is okay. So and that's that. So once we supply a good password so now you need to might need to change that to enter invalid password so that that goes to a different test method so a different feature line so yeah so then you can this and this one are different or you could as well pass them as a parameter i think we didn't get time to do that but maybe in the workshop we try to look into that so after uh, how to use scenario outline and background so but today is going to be the end of the training anyway so but in the uh workshop so we try to look at this again from end to, from beginning to the end so we also look at um, scenario outline and also ask to parameterize your code if time permits we can also look into data driven one so so that is that for for this right now so another uh, someone actually asked about reporting so we'll be using um, spectrum and that comes off the shelf with reports so this is the code I'm running for you and this is where I start and now it's got test reports so you can see it's got a lot of test reports if i sort by time i think this, is, this was the latest one okay so you can see that is when i run so now if i try to run all the tests now if i try to run all the tests so just to it's going to be a long time so we've got time to discuss so i run that so then we get the report after so you're expecting only one of them to to pass i'm i'm sure so the other one maybe will fail because of the issue that we found with the uh, recapture so i think we've yeah we've removed the recapture i expect it to pass anyway so let's see so so that is that so the like i said today is the end of the training so there will be uh i think there will be practical uh, uh, version so it's like we can have like three or four hours to lay our hands upon this thing i'll i'll send this particular uh, test framework out for you to use as uh, a sample and so that you can have something even if you want to run it by yourself then you can also have that with you then what else? so yeah I'll, I'll also send a feedback form for you to fill so that then we know if this has been useful to you or so please do fill it so it's going to maybe at least maybe encourage me to do the next one or not or to see if i wasted your time which i think maybe <laughs> so or not so and, and and to see what you think you could focus more next time and also to see if there's another area that you want us to cover so 
and thank for for your time. So we meet. Uh, we we said that the workshop is going to be on the 14th of May. So plan ahead to 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 come. So it's going to be kind of very practical time. So it's not. Sorry, sorry, you said the 14th of May? Yeah, 14th of May. Yeah, 14th of May. So. Okay, but I saw April, that's why I was asking. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 you are right. It's 14th of April. Uh -huh, okay, so. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, pardon my mistake. Yeah, 14th of April, not May. Oh. So yeah, it's actually in the in the next two weeks, isn't it? So in the next yeah. two weeks, yeah. yeah, fourteen top. It's going to be physical workshop, so I don't know whether we're going to re be able to record it because to be honest, it's going to be basically me going around, um, talking to people, and also also means that you can put the face, uh, the face to the voice. If you happen to be in my interview, I'll be able to know that okay, I've seen you before. Uh, if you happen to interview me, also you know, uh, this is the <laughs> 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 So yeah, that's another thing also to yeah, also to network within ourselves. To be honest, man, I think uh, at this time of we've got a lot of friends that do this right now so uh, I, I think in in the last few months I've, I've had people calling to say have you gone for this interview before and to be honest at the point mm -hmm. I, I I came to realize that the job market is not that big again out of when they asked me I've gone for most of this interview like three interviews like that in different income to and to be honest I tell people I don't go for lot of interviews by God's grace I'll say apologies to, to people. I don't go for a lot of interviews so I go for two or three before I decide on on which one I go. But even with that I I've seen people calling me and I've gone I've done interview with some of those companies. So and the same way with some of my friends also. So it's it's gonna be an in networking uh, events so that we can also talk and all. But more often than not, I'll say it's time for you to get your arms dirty, roll roll your sleeve, uh, and be able to do automation. Come with a good laptop is very very important. Set up the framework before you come. Don't come and start. Let's start setting up on the framework. Yes, he said, can we try this script in this environment? Yes, you can. Yeah. The Git dev environment is, is there, is there for you to use. For those ones that are in, in the internship, uh, for those that are in the internship, so you, you see I've missed for some weeks or months to, to contend with, so still bear with me. Ah, uh, okay. The location. I don't want to. I I I know it's it's kind of what I know. It's going to be the location, but I've not asked for permission. So I, I would just say, in terms of location, it's going to be Crayford, Crayford in London. So just to, so that you know how far it is to your place. So Crayford, but I will need to. Yeah. I'll, I'll need to ask for permission. I need to, yeah, man. So, like you, you all know, it's not. I'm not. I'm only acquiring this training, right? It's not. It's not my thing. So it's 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 uh, our CCG City of God uh, program. So it's basically I'm only using my time to to do this, but it's, like you can see, it's admin as RCCG City of God, so uh, that they are the owner of this training, so I'm only anchoring it, so I need to feedback to them, and also, you also, uh, in the feedback, be 
yeah, put your feedback, be constructive, and it's okay to say nasty word, but please. <laughs> It will go to my boss anyway. So, <laughs> okay. So yeah. So that's what's going to be. So uh, it's been almost like six or seven months, weeks now, isn't it? So and even though it was meant to be six hours, I think we'll cover um, even for people in automation testing, it's more uh, more than um, almost like ten hours of, of your time. So and I appreciate that. I'm not taking that for granted. So. And like most of you would have known, most of this training right now that you've, you've gone through would cost you more like £500 um, to, to do, at least. Uh, the video, yes. Uh, I will collect everything together, so including the manual testing, so I will collect all the videos together. I think what happened, I've removed some of them because there was no enough space. So I think one of, in one day we couldn't have the video because the space was full. So I've downloaded them. So I'll put them on, on this chart site so that I think you have it like for forever because I don't know what's going to happen on our FCC website. So you're going to have the video. So, okay. I was talking about the training. Yeah, the training in normal well this is also normal so if i had to do it myself also i think i won't charge more than 500 pounds for that so the church is offering it for free for people so i'm also offering my time so uh, i'm not paid for that so and the church also is giving so it's, it's kind of an impact um, economy what's it called community impact service that we try to do so and this is one of those ones that we're going to do so that that was said give feedback so this might mean that we have to do it more or we do it less or we don't do it at all. So it's going to be like, so it's going to go to the pastor to see if I've been able to waste your time or I've been able to contribute something to your time. I've been able to do something. So, and that is that. So, okay. Yeah. So by now I've got, yeah, we should have our spec run results out. So, yeah okay so the spec run results so as you can see i've got two classes yeah of it's expected even the invalid ones are the one that <laughs> that's so the normal one was the one that failed because of those issue with the login and everything so so that's not so good to so yeah that is the next one this one, so if we open that, so you can see you got 50% pass rate, and then you have your test execution, two successful, two failed, nothing is pending, nothing is skipped, and if you scroll down, you have your feature test that uh, uh, that you run. So login page fifty percent rate because one was successful, one failed, and and also the registration the same thing. So you can click on let's go click on the login. It takes you to the test step itself. So this is the first test, and it was tried three, two times after it failed. So and then and the same way also for the registration also you see that. So if you click on that. Also, you go to that particular test, and you can see. So the first one, step given, I navigate to the site. That's fine. I click on the login. That's fine. Email address is fine, and also it gives you the time. Also, it takes to to do those steps. So and also enter your password, and then you click on your sign in button, and you start. So now it's expecting false, but it's getting true. So, and also it's keep putting the log for you. And you can see we use uh, unit tests at this particular point. So we're going to go for the other one. So, so and then looking at that, try to make, see what actually is, is coming in. As in, what exactly is this? 
jailbreak. But more often than not, it's explained here yeah, to you. So you know what you're trying to do. We are trying to assert uh, the login, uh, if you are able to log in successfully or not. But of course, we are not, because we are not using the right uh, login details. So it's expecting that and it's getting that. So, okay. So it's expecting false. Yeah, uh, I need to point out expecting false because you are expecting that that particular um, error not to be displayed, but the error is displayed. That's 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 the issue. If it's successful, then that yeah, expectation will be false, and what you get also is false. So the same way also for the second login also. Um, is that? Yeah. So another try, so then the second try, so you know it's tried like three times. So then also the second login was okay, successful without any uh, issue. Then you have your registration also, registration, regist registering new users. So, and yeah, that also failed, expecting message not to be null. I think we are empty or found not. Okay, that is weird because okay, okay, said it's not expected to be null. Okay, but well, it found it to be null, so it's expecting that some it should not contain. Yeah, not expected to be null should contain something, but it doesn't contain anything. So that is for then I am logged in. So I am registered. So boy was not able to register anyway. So and yeah. So that that is far on then also does the assertion again. So oh sorry I say assertion dot and it does the retry again. So and the last one is the invalid one. So that's the registering invalid one, which you would just say more steps. So so that is that. Any other question before? Okay, someone was saying we should debug and see what the problem is. So let's try to, we got only a few minutes, so type your question while I do this. So I'll only go through this one just to be sure why that is failing. So, and now, okay. Okay, it's expected because one, uh, with the recapture, you are not going to, yeah, be able to sign in into register. So, and if you go to, then I register. So it said not to be null or empty. So that message it said not to be null. So when you register, you should see a message saying thank you and everything, but it was not because it was not successfully registered. So I think in that regard, it is okay because of the capture, So which is, which is fine. So I, I think we are expecting that to, to be. But if you want to now flip it, let's flip it. Okay, I think we've done that also in this case. So, okay, no. So... We can also flip this one just to be sure that it's the, because of the capture, it's not going to sign in. So, and I am not registered. So, so then registration step. So instead of should be not or empty, so we know that that shouldn't, that should be no. Instead of not to be not, that, that should be, 
should be null or empty. So which is the opposite of the particular one that we did. So let's try to run that. So um, okay, all right. So the same issue. Uh, now go to copy, copy and paste, registering the. So, which is your negative testing? Okay, cool. So, let's run this. And what is going to happen is like, if you run that, your there will be another test report created for you. For test, uh, spec run, you don't need to do anything by you adding spec run to your test from Nikki Packet. That does that for you automatically. So, so I think I will just go through that quickly. So, in the Nikki package, we already got spec run installed. So, that would create that for you. So, there are other options that you can use. So, if time permits, when we are at the workshop, we try to use it. So you see spectron dot spec flow. That does that for you automatically. So then you just need to go to where your code is stored. And where you you have your solution, you should be able to see test results. And that should list every time you run your script, it will generate a report for you. So whether it's based. It works with scenario at client, it works with everything. So yeah. So okay, let's run the last one. Okay, quickly I don't someone ask me what do I have in my app config? I'll show that right now quickly. So uh, I would Put this on the on the website so that you can download then put it down. But I would advise you to create your own by yourself. Just keep this as a reference, to be honest, so, so that you'll be able to say, yeah, I can create test framework from scratch. So yeah, so I'm expecting that to pass. So by passing means that I am not logged in, I am not registered. So because you expect it to fail because it's, it's a failure, but you now flip it just to confirm that, yeah, it actually failed to register. So that, that's what you want. So I think that's everything. So uh, for you to, when you uh, add Spectron to your Nuget package, it's also added to, and even if you, when you uh, add uh, spec flow also to, you, to your solution, it, everything is stored in the app config. So your app config, app config should look like this. One, you have your spec flow, and also you should have your spec run as a test provider. I think I mentioned this in the first in, in the first test. So mm -hmm. in the first session or second session, you are only allowed one unit you know, unit test provider. So and if you go and download n unit dot spec flow and you add it to it, you're going to have conf um, conflict. So what you need to do, you need to comment one of them out. So to comment that, that's you just put um, the sign and enclose it also with that sign. So this line is actually com uh, commented out. So, and the same way, way with all these lines are, are comments. So, yeah. So if I want to use n unit now, I just need to comment that out. Just need to comment that out. And then on comment, if I want to use MS test, I'll uncomment this or 
I just need to put end unit if I have got end unit installed. So that's that's that. So yeah. Uh, question. Yeah, do we start to automate new stories? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah that's <laughs> fine. For those people in the okay. in the internship, yes, it's very very important. So it's not everybody that was able to go for internship. You know, uh, yeah, a lot of people applied, but it was not. To be honest, yeah, let's see what happened next one. So yeah, for those ones, for those one uh, in the internship, yeah, you need to start automating your. Test, uh, test cases right now. So, um, yeah. Any other questions? Otherwise, we call it a night. And um, thanks, everyone. You've been very, very good students. So, and I appreciate the time. So, and I can see almost like 20 people are stay with me after uh, many weeks of rambling and rambling. So, you've been very, very uh, good with that. Thanks, thanks for that. I'm not taking that time for for granted. So everyone has got things to do in their house, but you took time to to do this, and it will be fruitful for you. You be you will use it for good things, and you will remember this time for good. Thanks so much for that. So I would call it tonight. So I will see you on the 14th of April for the workshop if you can make it. Thanks, yeah. Bye.